Hi, my name is Jonathan Eves and I'm a TME in Cisco Systems. I work in a team providing software-defined access to our customers, providing automated end-to-end -end services and creating a consistent user experience without compromising on security. Today I'm going to talk about an application being provided on Cisco DNA Center, namely group-based policy analytics. As an introduction, organizations have challenges today. High-profile attacks we all either experience or read on the news are driving customers towards an internal segmentation strategy. It's no longer effective purely securing the perimeter. However, the internal network is often largely unknown and it's difficult to understand the network behavior of people and things. Customers are asking for help in creating a network segmentation policy that is effective in today's world. So what is Cisco providing as a solution to this challenge? We are providing an application on Cisco DNA Center which provides three things. Firstly, discovery of group interaction and visibility based on behavior. Basically, this is discovering what group-based security policy is required. Number two is modeling or validation and simulation of new groups and policies. And thirdly, helping with the orchestration or authoring of these policies on the network. The first phase of this app will cover discovery and validation and authoring will be delivered in future phases. The basis of the tool is to visualize network behavior based on groups. Group entities are learned from a number of sources today. One is Cisco Identity Services Engine, or ICE. Once we have connectivity to ICE, the app can learn of scalable groups, or SGTs, deployed on the network, plus profile groups, which indicate different types of endpoints connected. Another way we can learn of groups is from Cisco AI Endpoint Analytics. This uses multi-factor classification labeling techniques to send asset attributes to ICE for IoT profile and SGT assignment. Additionally, Cisco StealthWatch can be integrated. Once connectivity is established, StealthWatch host groups are learnt as allocated automatically by the system or manually by the StealthWatch administrator. Along with this group information, group-based policy analytics also receives NetFlow from the network devices. And it stitches all this context together to produce graphs and tables to help the administrators visualize network behavior based on groups. The idea is to provide an application to aid in network discovery and visualization and ultimately deliver mechanisms to help analyze security policy requirements and create effective security policy designs. Going over to Cisco DNA Center itself then, you navigate to the group-based policy analytics app by using this top left icon. Going to policy and group-based access control and then going to the analytics menu. That takes you to the main group-based policy analytics page. If ICE hasn't yet been connected to the system at this point, then the application will display a series of wizards to guide the administrator through setting up connectivity to ICE and StealthWatch and help with NetFlow configuration. Since the system I'm using here is already connected to ICE, then the wizard isn't shown, but you can still get to those configuration pages navigating through this settings link and clicking on configuration. You can edit the group data connectors to configure ICE and StealthWatch. And you can edit the communication connectors to help setting up with NetFlow. Back at the main menu then, see this search bar, which we'll be discussing later, and the three boxes, which you see here, showing the group numbers for which flows have been discovered. Let's click on the number in the first box for scalable groups learnt from ICE. Here you see a graph showing flows that have been discovered between the source scalable groups and destination scalable groups. 
If you hover over one of the lines depicting the flows, it shows how many actual flows there are within the group to group interaction. Note the date and time selector here, where you can change the date and time range for data displayed. Also note that you can change the destination group type using the blue funnel here. So you can change the destination group type to be ICE profiles, for example. And now this shows from source scalable groups to destination ICE profiles. And you can do the same with Stealthwatch host groups. So now it's source, source scalable groups to destination Stealthwatch host groups. Let's go back to source and destination scalable groups. Now we can hover over the source groups and the tool shows you the interactions with all the destination groups. Note also the breadcrumbs at the top left of the screen here. These can be used to navigate back to previous screens or to the main overview page. Let's click on a source group. So for scanners, let's click on that. And you're taken to the graph showing just those interactions, i.e. one, it's a one-to-many group interactions. So it's from scanners, it shows scanners to the storage or unknown destination groups. You can hover over the flows again to show a bit more information. You can search for groups here, should you want to. And on the right hand side, you can see the unique traffic flow counts to each destination group. You can choose to see a table view of the data, should you want to. That's a table view, going back to the graph view. And you can see the data for an inbound or outbound direction. From this one-to-many graph, we can either click on an individual flow here, or click on the destination group on the right-hand side to navigate to the one-to-one -one graph. So this is from the one source scalable group to the one destination scalable group. In this case, it's from the scanners group to storage. Now for this group to group information discovered, you can see the service names or applications flowing between these groups. You can see the protocol and the port numbers and the direction of flow. You can choose a different date and time range should you want to. Select the table range or graph range as before. And you can also look at the data in the other direction by clicking this blue arrow. You'll see a filter option here and a find option, but also a create and a download report function. Creating a report takes the information currently being displayed on the screen and automatically creates a Cisco DNA Center report based on that information. So the application is showing ports 104, 11112 and 1550. So they have been discovered from the scanners group to the storage group. Communications engineers working in the medical industry will recognize these ports as typically being used for the DICOM protocol. DICOM standing for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine which is used for the communication and management of medical imaging information and related data. As a system administrator, you may wonder if you have a contract already configured for this flow interaction. To check, click on this View Contract option. You will see both the discovered information on the right here and the configured contract on the left for a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, you'll see in our case, the configured contract has actually been created to deny remote services and is therefore totally inappropriate to protect the DICOM communications we have discovered. Let's change this policy to make our devices secure. Under Policies, Click on the policy cell from scanners to storage.
and you can see the current contract used is deny remote services. Click on the change contract and let's choose the permit scanner to PAX DICOM contract instead. PAX in the medical sector stands for Picture Archiving and Communication System. Let's change our contract and save it. Now when we navigate back to Analytics and view the contract from scanners to the storage group, we see the configured contract is appropriate for the discovered flows as it is permitting ports 104, 1550 and 11112 but it's actually denying everything else which will really limit the possibility of malware propagation throughout the network. Visualizing the configured contract and discovered information side by side can be seen as you can see here within the application but it can also be seen from the group based access control menu as well. Click on the policies and we'll click on the policy from scanners to storage here and you'll see the view contract activity option so if we click on that and again you can see the comparison side by side this is the discovered flows and this is the configured contract So let's go back to the Policy Analytics main menu. We can click on the ICE profiles number. So before we went into the scalable groups. So if we click on the ICE profiles discovered here, this shows flows sourced from ICE profiles to destination scalable groups. And everything we showed previously is relevant for these screens. So you can navigate down from the source group, navigate down to the one-to-one -one screen here and you can see the ports and protocols. And again, back at the main menu, you can also click on the Stealthwatch host group number. And now this shows from source Stealthwatch host groups to destination scalable groups. And again, everything showed previously is relevant for, for this group activity. So back at the main menu, let's get to the search function. Start entering a word to search for any group name. Let's say W. It searches as you type and displays relevant entries. Now if we type A, it's found water control in scalable groups. You see there. And water filter profile and water pump profile in the profiles. You can click on view all to take you to that search group here and then click on the entry to take you to the one-to-many graph. So let's go back to the search menu and now let's start searching for a number. If we put in 10 for example, the tool shows options for searching within source or destination of IP address or MAC address. Let's, let's append the search with so 10.5 and the tool shows options now just for searching within IP addresses. Click on the source IP address and you see a table of the results. If you click on the funnel icon to the right here you can enter multiple concatenated searches. For example if you're, if you're interested in just the flows terminated in the employees destination scalable group so this is the destination scalable group you can type employees in here noting that you can add multiple entries with and or all functions and if I apply that you can see the table is updated based on your search criteria the three dots here can be used to enable or disable different columns to show more or less information as desired. We've also got this ribbon icon which can be used to save this search for later. Save the current search 
and you can save it. So that concludes this group-based policy analytics demo. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Thanks very much for watching.